Hello. I'd like to talk about my ZET computer in this video, in terms of its current design, and the problems associated with that design, and um, what I'd like to do with it in the future, what features I would like to add to it. Now, it is spread out sort of roughly in front of me. There are two main circuit boards. There is this one here, which is the board for input and output, I'll come to that one in a minute, and this one towards the back, which is the main brain of the system. Now I call it the brain because it contains the logic in terms of the uh, central processing unit, which is a Z80, it's a 10 MHz Z80. Uh, it has the memory, which is made up of a 32K RAM chip here and a 32K RAM chip here for 64 kilobytes in total, and a 128 kilobyte ROM chip, which holds the operating system. It's a flash ROM chip, so I can uh, program it externally, plug it in, and that provides the operating system and other useful support software. Uh, it also features the clock signal generator. I did mention it's 10 MHz Z80, but due to problems with timing, I'm only running it at 2 MHz, and I'll come on to why that is in a moment. The second circuit board is this one, which provides input and output between the user and the rest of the computer. For example, at the front here are two PS2 ports, which can be used, for example, in this case, there's a keyboard plugged in, but also here you can plug in a mouse. Over here is a pin header, which is connected to a 128 by 64 pixel graphical LCD. There is also here two LEDs, which can be used for status indicators. There's a green one for file reads and a red one for file writes. Next to the keyboard port is this cluster of resistors and transistors. This is used to drive the I squared C bus, or inter-integrated circuit bus. This is a simple two-wire bus, onto which you can connect a number of different devices, each with their own address. Devices could be something like a real-time clock, or a temperature sensor, or a memory like a RAM or EEPROM. In my case, I've connected a 32 kilobyte EEPROM for storage, and a real-time clock. The two wires of the I squared C bus, these two wires in fact, come to this breadboard which sits between the two main circuit boards. Now this mess of wires here, and this mess of wires here, connects the address bus and the data bus of both boards to each other, as well as various other control signals and power, which comes from this power supply here. Now the I2C bus actually terminates here on this board with these two chips. Here is the real-time clock chip that I mentioned earlier, and here is the 32 kilobyte EEPROM that I mentioned earlier, which is used for storage. I did mention that there are design problems with this Z80 computer, and most of them are related to input and output. For example, this is a 10 MHz Z80, but I'm only running it at 2 MHz, and the reason for that is this graphical LCD. Now, this is a fairly cheap graphical LCD, it only cost about £15, and it has a fairly slow read and write cycle, and uh, that is the speed in which you're allowed to write bytes to the display and read bytes back from the display. If you exceed that speed, then the display will not see the byte that you have written, or not return the correct bytes that you're trying to read from it, and you end up with display corruption, you end up with sort of garbled text or garbled graphics, or you know, it starts reading and writing in the wrong location, stuff like that, and you really want a nice robust display. So to ensure that it is, I am reading and writing within the uh, timing restrictions of this display, I have slowed the Z80 right down to 2 MHz. Ideally, what I would like to be able to do is to be able to switch between 2 MHz and 10 MHz in software. And this would allow me to run you know, regular Z80 software at 10 MHz, but when I need to read and write to and from this display, I could then drop the speed down to the stable 2 MHz that it requires. Another problem is in the design of this I.O. board. Now, I have implemented it using dedicated discrete uh, logic, so these are sort of discrete uh, latches for input and output registers, and these are this is all sort of the glue logic that's required to drive this circuit board. And it makes it quite large physically, which is not entirely practical because I have run out of board space here, so one of these uh, registers, there are only actually two hardware registers on here, but one of them is a write-only register because I don't have enough room to put the read part of it you know, physically on the board which is not entirely practical. What I would like to do to get around that issue is to stick on a Z80 parallel I.O. chip and replace all that with, with one of those Z80 parallel I.O. chips, which provides a large number of input and output pins, 
um, in a single 40-pin IC that is designed specifically to be connected to the Z80. The only problem with this scheme is that uh, to get the 10 MHz variety, if I do indeed, indeed plan to switch the Z80 to 10 MHz, I would have to import it from the States, which is fairly expensive. Uh, whilst if I were to replace all that with the uh, chip, I would then have more with the uh, parallel I/O chip. I would then have space to include a, a UART or a, ser a serial port in, in effect, which I could then use to attach devices that require serial communications. And there are a large number of these. For example, I could um, hook it up to the serial port on my computer to transfer files. I could attach it to a modem, or I could attach it to a. Um, you can get. Uh, modules for reading and writing files from uh, USB storage or mini SD cards which communicate over a serial uh, connection. And I could use that to replace this 32K uh, EEPROM on the ISCOID C bus for storage with a, you know, a 2 megabyte uh, USB flash drive or something like that, which would be much more practical in the long run. The computer runs the Z80 version of BBC Basic by Richard Russell as its main working environment. Now, obviously this will let you write and run basic programs from the command line, but I haven't yet implemented all of the features, so it's missing most of the useful features like uh, file manipulation or drawing routines, things like that. So it's not entirely use useful, but it can be used as a sort of general purpose command line inter interpreter. For example, any command that is prefixed with a star is passed to the operating system, and I've used this to implement a number of commands. So, for example, if I type I2C probe, this will probe the I2C bus and will list any devices that respond to particular addresses. For example, here we've got uh, a device at address A0, which is the 32 kilobyte EEPROM, and a device at address D0, which is the real-time clock. Now, that I squared CE prom at address A0, the uh, files on it can be listed by typing star dot. And as you can see, all of them have a C8 or SC extension. And these stand for, this stands for chip 8 or super chip 8. And this is because the operating system has got a chip 8 interpreter built in. So, for example, I can type star chip 8 invaders dot C8 and press return, and that will run the chip 8 interpreter and load the Space Invaders program. Now, as I'm only running at 2 MHz and my interpreter is not written especially efficiently, and because I am missing timer hardware so cannot implement the 60 Hz clock that chip 8 games rely on properly, they all run a bit slowly, which is not entirely useful. However, 2 MHz is not as slow as it may sound. I have implemented one assembly program on here, which is a uh, spinning cube demo and can be run by typing star cube. And that does run fairly fluidly, even though the CPU is only running at 2 MHz. Now, as you can probably tell, there's an awful lot to do on the software front, and this is something I'm going to need to address. I have developed a TI-83 Plus version of BBC Basic that is now fairly feature complete, and I shall be using a lot of the code for that on this platform.